um, Earthspark Season 2, Episode 1, it was Aftermath. They go to a, uh, they, they're trying to get the Ember Stone. It's a year later. They're, they're trying to get the Ember Stone from Starscream and his minions. Uh, Megatron's kind of in it. Prime's kind of in it. But they don't really say much of anything. Um, one of the Terrans is captured by Breakdown. I think uh, they get to go rescue him, basically. Uh, so, yeah, you've got a... Yeah, the, the Mayhem Squad is mentioned offhandedly from the from the the comics, UK comics, which was also mentioned in Mush and in Lexicon. Um, so, so clearly they they're aware of Transformers Lexicons, and they've been referencing. They wouldn't be referencing the UK comics; they'd be referencing ours because ours is more important. Yeah, so <laughs> no, not really. They're referencing the UK comics. This episode was called In Ruins. It's dedicated to, in loving memory, to William Rizika from the show. Apparently died during the making of it. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't know that. Somebody from the show. Um, and, uh, yeah, it says, uh, there were, uh, sometimes in all Transformers mush, quite a lot, actually, in all Transformers mush, and in the end in the, in the, in the Chimera stuff, somebody would inevitably, somebody famous would inevitably die, or somebody known would inevitably die, and, to put a, they put a, a dedication at the end of somebody that died. They're doing that here, so they've they're clearly aware of our stuff. But that's just weird. Um, I don't know who this person is that died, but but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we 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 do stuff like that. So here we have um, this episode is about uh, the they calling her Mosey, but she's Mo, I guess, or I guess. <laughs> The, the father guy, and there, there's a gag, and it's kind of like E.T., but it's with a Quintesson Executioner. They established they, that Quintus created the Quintessons, which makes sense, and that, and that, he, uh, he abandoned them because he probably died. And the Quintesson Executioner is in the ruins, I'm not sure who built them, but it didn't say, there's, there's ruins and wiggly that look like, kind of like an Aztec temple, it's got like shooting darts, things, and floors, floors that go down, and pits, and what you'd find in an Aztec temple. <laughs> um, and and uh, I don't know of any Mesoamerican ruins in uh, in the, on the west coast where the story takes place, the east coast where the story takes place. But uh, but that that's odd. Um, unless this is sort of a pseudo sequel to the, the Mesoamerican episode in Peru with. Jetfire. I don't think it is, though. I think they're on the East Coast instead of on the West Coast. Um, to, yeah, so, so, was it, was it, uh, the, the Mo and the, the motorcycle guy robot go to Terran, go to the, find the ruin. They find these ruins and they inadvertently open an alien spaceship. They're able to communicate with it because it communicates through the, through the, uh, the wrist the Terran you know, wrist thing that's on a wrist, um, which is kind of silly, but okay, it's like a communicator. It's fine. Um, when a sonic executioner comes out, very, very silly um, uh, final, the boss fight at the end with him. Especially an 11 year old girl is beating up a, uh, or maybe 12, is beating up a, uh, a, a giant robot because she has a battle suit. The kids have battle suits in the previous one, and now they have battle suits in this one. It's kind of like an exosuit, but more advanced. It's an exosuit. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, the ratings on these are, are, are not great, but it's not designed to appeal to my generation, but rather the or even or even the millennials. It's designed to to the, to the alpha generation. Their te early teens. If, if not younger, slightly younger, actually. Late Millennials and Early Alpha. So Generation Z and, or Zoomers and Early Alpha. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's perfectly salvageable as a story. It's a kid show, clearly. It has that, that vibe. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's not, um, it's perfectly harmless. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they, the people are in danger in the story, but it's like, that, yeah, it's a cartoon, so <laughs> nobody actually gets hurt. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that was uh, the In Ruin. So, uh, just uh, an aside, I looked up William Ruzica. Apparently he was a storyboard animator on Transformers Prime and, and G.I. Joe Renegades and a bunch of other stuff. And, uh, yeah, a bunch, of, a bunch of stuff for Marvel and did easy at Marvel as well. Um, yeah, he passed away in February of 2023, actually. But because the shows are in production, you know, the cartoons take a while to put together, especially a CGI one. Um, he was, uh, uh, he passed away over, a, yeah, over a year and a half ago. But, yeah, because it's like, you know, <laughs> it's now October. It's almost two years later at this point. So, well, it's a year and some months later. It was February of and now it's and now it's October of 2024, so it has been quite a long time. So that's who that was, for the animator, storyboard artist on, on, on Transformer shows. It's not just this one, and it was referenced uh, in their in their thing. This was the um, kind of a Cal Cat episode. It wasn't really, but kind of was. Uh, it's called a Control Alt Delete, third episode of uh, the, the season. Uh, and this one, Hashtag, who is the, uh, the, the van, is changed into the SUV. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, there was, there was an earlier one that's a tow truck one that also, that one that, like, yeah, it's, it's not out of sequence, it's just they screwed up and they had an earlier one, a purple tow truck one. That's this other one that's a different one, I guess. Yeah, uh, mm, mm, yeah, I'm and they haven't, um, yeah. There's this goofy sort of, she's talking to the, the robot is talking to the, like, the Siri thing inside the robot. Like, it's got, like, a Magellan Siri slash thing, you know, like you have on your phone. Uh, delivering hard drives to a recycle center, even though some of them contain data that, yeah, the Autobots took over the Ghost Command Center, and uh, and their uh, even though the top secret hard drives are being taken away anyway to be left at a recycle center, so why would they do that? Yeah, if it's a top secret facility, you don't you don't get rid of uh, secret information. <laughs> anyway, it's a kid show. It's not supposed to make sense. She wants to get a new alt mode and all that. And some of the alt-right people are confused about which characters are which. And they're saying this is purple hashtag one who, oh no, it's another gender thing. She wants to become something else. And no, she's not even that character. It's a different one. It's hashtag. She just, she's not, uh, yeah, she's a transformer. She's not, yeah, there's not, none of that's in there, that character. That character just, as body dysmorphism, that's different than uh, that's different than than uh, gender preference. Body dimorphism, um, yeah, <laughs> um, so that's different, different thing. And then they're robots, so they're they can change transformer form if they want to. Yeah, so sure. appearance by shockwave. Yeah, in Paris by Shockwave, we have, yeah, you know, chasing her and doing stuff. And Shockwave's menacing, because Shockwave was mentioned in all Transformers Mush as an evil, rapey guy. Um, and this one, kind of is, again. So, yeah, that's, that's Shockwave is following that that character in the, in the story. As we get Ravage, who shows up and transforms twice into a G1 cassette tape and back into a cat. Escape to Seattle, what? Uh, that was funny. Well, yeah, that's the Cal Cat moment. You have to ravage the Transformers into a cassette tape. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, this episode was episode th four called The Butterfly Effect. Uh, they go to a weird carnival where there's the the, 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 the pale maestro, I think his name is. He's the, the, the carnival barker guy. There's two different. Little figures, one of them is Pale Major and one's the other guy. Uh, the, 
Um, he's kind of a sissy villain kind of guy, and uh, and uh, yeah, the uh, the boy character meets a girl, and there's a they keep going back to that. So the butterflies in the stomach is the butterfly effect, not necessarily. Yeah, and the and the robot's connected to him, so the robot keeps Twitch keeps uh, freaking uh, having a yeah <laughs> um, an unopportune moments. Twitch and the other experience their emotions. Um, and they go on a weird carnival ride that's revealed to be Cosmos, who's been hijacked by this evil carnival barker, sort of uh, to uh, to be uh, one of them. Um, and he's apparently been been there for. The decades, apparently, uh, yeah, the uh, uh, and he looks like Cosmos from pretty much from G One, um, but yeah, but much larger than than he should be. But but they had episodes of the show where they did mass shifting, so maybe he's, yeah, it kind of works. It, it, fine, um, the um, the, the 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 animation did. It's fine. It's a uh, I the storyboard artist guy that died is still in the credits. So I think if that, I think he finished all the storyboards of this part of the season before he died, and uh, so that's that's the guy that 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 was mentioned in the previous one. Um, yeah. So there's there's just like this. Yeah, it's it's fine. Um, I guess they established the. the Boys age to be going into high school or something because he's in junior high, he's gonna go into high school. Um, that yeah, so they're young, the yeah, uh, in the story. Then it, yeah, it's a it's a again, it's a zoomer and alpha generation transformer series. It's not meant to be, uh, yeah, not meant to be uh, the other. And, and I doubt that the people complaining about the series ever watched it. They were just like, oh my gosh, there's a character I don't like, and that, rawr. And yeah, they didn't watch it, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's perfectly harmless. It's, it's totally harmless. I think for the evening, I am going to stop watching and go back to watching uh, 5, 6, 7, and 8 tomorrow. Um, because it is late, and so this is, this is the first section of this, and then I'll do the other ones tomorrow. Uh, the reviews so yeah um yeah so yeah. Mm, it's only october what is it, the 19th october 8 18th 18th um, um, hmm. yeah uh this is uh Spark uh episode five of, of the, well five of season two uh the, Togetherness, uh, the, the main Malto group attempts to do a, a uh, they're trying to do that combination thing, like after the after the fair carnival in the last one, uh, while uh, Jawbreaker and and the tow truck guy, the Chaos Terran um, Aftermath, I guess is the same. And the, he he, um, he does a, they get the they do the whole gag thing where two people are stuck together fused together kind of thing uh, with the uh, the fuse form uh, referencing the, some of the fuse ores and some of the other stuff from the G1 and, uh, but it's not connected and basically they just uh, yeah they have to work together to, but they inadvertently uh, activate the the, uh, the toxic energon that causes the uh, a, a plant monster to eat other creatures and make other plant monsters it's like a big Sort of, a, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a loom, <laughs> basically, from, um, and it goes out and it's doing its thing. And uh, it's a slightly different than the loom, though. It's like, from that, uh, just Prodigy. It's more like the one in uh, the Calcat, uh, like Star Trek Legacy. It's more like that. Uh, but it's more of a mushroom than a plant in this version. So it's it's kind of different than the other one. The other loom in, in Discovery were more like, uh, like bug things, bug plants. These are more like, yeah, so it's somewhere in between. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, he inadvertently, uh, the Packy inadvertently leads the, the Decepticon to the, uh, to the cave water where this 
weird cave water that we bring in. Uh, isn't making them stoned. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, yeah, and um, that's the. And he, he steals it at the end. Uh, the chaos turn steals it. So that's basically the plot. Uh, and this season thus far, this is episode five, uh, does have Nightshade, but she doesn't address anything, or they don't address anything about their uh, proclivities at all. So I don't know why the old right is complaining about season three at all, because she doesn't even bring it up. They don't even bring it up. So, uh, yeah, so much ado about nothing in that case. Uh, which, is, which is Shakespeare means something, but in this case doesn't mean anything. Um, but yes. Uh, yeah, there's nothing untoward in it. it just, the merging stuff. I suppose they're thinking, oh, that's something. Ah, that's it about it. But no, no, it's, it's not really. It's just a silly the joke being the two of them are merged together and two heads are stuck together and the bodies so yeah, it's, it's it's an old comedy joke from like you know back in the day like oh the two headed monster guy is that's basically what they're spoofing little nod to little shop of horrors in there as well yeah it's fine <laughs> so this uh, this was episode 6 the uh, the spitfire uh, spitfire is an old world war 2 plane which is kind of weird uh, she's a, um, it's the old, uh, it's a classic trope story idea. The evil twin, basically. Sibling rivalry evil twin. Uh, this seems to be inspired by the alt Transformers much story, The Jazzy Zone, which has the, uh, the, uh, the sarcastic, uh, sister character of uh, Jazz in it. Jazzy. Uh, it also, also that was on alt Transformers much. We adapted that story, Sibling Rivalry. Uh, and this apparently is a version of that story, uh, but done as a sort of like, uh, yeah, updated to to have it be these other two characters because that would be weird if Wheeljack was suddenly, you know, Jazz was suddenly there when Jazz isn't isn't there, uh, so they made it Twitch and in Spitfire instead. Uh, at least that's what it appears. But like they they watched, they're aware of of all Transformers. Watch the videos. And uh, should get a lot more ratings on on the, on the Transformer channel, just because that's what's happening uh, with this with this show. They do reference uh, Nightshade again, but she doesn't she doesn't talk about anything regarding that uh, other stuff. Uh, so they, they they don't go there at all. She just helps. There's a competition. Uh, there the Autobots and, and Megatron. It's weird that Megatron's a good guy. It's just weird. Um. The, but they're following the later uh, combiner, post combiner wars story arc, align continuity, and it's its own universe where Witwicky's a town and the Maltos are, and yeah, and and and, and during the competition thing, uh, Mr. Malto takes off his jacket, and underneath he's wearing some sort of weird combination of of like an Arabian Nights outfit and a and a and like a like a like a, it looks like an Arabian Nights outfit, but he's got the tattoos of a uh, like a Filipino guy. So are, are they Filipinos? Because that would be interesting. Um, so they definitely are not related to to the other to the the Indian ones in. Um, Later on in, in Transformers uh, Animated. Uh, it was supposed to be set hundreds of years later for that one. Um, this one this is clearly contemporary, but in a different timeline. I'm not sure which timeline it fits in. It, uh, it, it's clearly not part of Transformers 1 at all. Uh, yeah, so we have Twitch, and, and we have the competition. And of course we have our Nemesis Prime and Prime kind of thing going on with these two siblings, sibling rivalry. Name the story originally. Um, the Jazzy Zone person should get the credits if she's in. I don't know if she's in the credits there, but maybe she is. And I, I don't think so. I don't think that the fan film. I think the fan film didn't inspire it. I think it was more, or more or less that they that they had a similar idea. It's yet another trope, the evil twin trope. So in that sense, it's it's that. Whereas the All Transformers story was more about 
or just being a, a chaotic character that doesn't take over. They just they, well, she kind of did at the end, yeah. So yeah, in the sequel, she does. There's there's a sequel to the Jazzy Jones story where they go to Tarn and they go to the city and then she takes over. That is also like this story. So there's a Lexicon sequel by Jazzy Zone as well that does this story. So that's probably the one they're taking from is the, the sequel where she tries to take over and then there's the two halves of the story arc and the two personalities are similar and one of them replaces the other one, uh, which is basically kind of the, which is basically the, the hint in that story that leads to the end of Track the Lexicons where, where they, uh, they go, oh, by the way, in Lexicons, uh, yeah, Springer, the whole time when you're watching Springer and his adventures in Lexicons world, it was the other Springer from, from the, uh, from the other timeline the whole time. <laughs> That's the way to do a sideways universe. You were actually in another part of the multiverse. You were watching his adventures. In the, the end. Uh, Transformers Prime, Transformers, War for Cybertron, Transformers, meet up with them at the end, rescue. Yeah, so that's kind of that's probably how they'll resolve this. If it's the same way, as, 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 except they're not doing time travel here. They're doing the evil twin uses that merging technology to, to replace her personality, like Kirk and the Lady Captain in that silly episode of the, the original Star Trek. Like the evil twin paradox stories, like so many others, very similar to that. Um, it's not heady, it's not political, it's not even remotely uh, grooming anything. It's not like that at all. There's just, it's just a cartoon with, 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 with uh, this one's just about, uh, yeah, just about, like, the evil twin. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Um, slightly better power. And, and she loses the contest because Twitch goes and rescues the, the human. In uh, Mr. Volta, and and she's mad, so they have a fight. In a similar way to Optimus Prime and Megatron in this story, they become friends later. They shouldn't be, but okay. <laughs> I, I liked it better in Lexicons when they've sort of made, and in, in, in Mush when they made Megatron still a bad guy, but his motivations are just different. Yeah, it's a gray area that way. And Optimus Prime is kind of aloof in some of those stories where he's. Where Galvatron is clearly a bad guy. You're not going to become friends with Galvatron. He's just going to be a bad guy on his own level. It kind of makes more sense. Anyway, so that's uh, my take on this episode thus far. Spitfire. So, yeah, this is a review of The Imposters, episode 7. Uh, the, the episode 7, the, uh, yeah, they, the, uh, Twitch and the other have switched personalities. It's kind of obvious that they have, they do the, the evil twin to switch personalities, so they continue the other the arc in the, for the other story. Uh, they, they, they're they gonna capture the, 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 the Decepticon battle axe thing that uh, Mandroid had, the, the, it's essentially the Scythe of Destiny. Uh, and um, they're gonna like go out, but it's an axe instead of a Scythe. Or a sickle. <laughs> um, the sickle of doom, of, of death. But it's more of an axe. It's more of a, it's more of a, a marvel axe, like a Stormbringer kind of thing. Um, yeah, so. Not McGurn, though. A Stormbringer. Um, so, um, so, so we have, uh, it's an axe, not a, not a hammer. Um, uh, they got a, the, the Autobot mission is odd because of what they, what they're, why would they do that? They should know that, you know, the backstory that they, that they're going on, that they're, they can't do that. Uh, uh clearly the, the, uh, the characters get to have fun playing the other character. Uh, that's fairly obvious, but, uh, yes, to, well, it's for kids. So they, they understand uh, the simplest way they could possibly put that out is, yeah, okay, she, the other Twitch is in the Decepticon camp. And the Spitfire is at the other camp. They switched minds, so they're doing the Freaky Friday thing. Um, uh, better done than Wonder Woman 84. Mm. Of course, anything is better done than Wonder Woman 84. Um, at least in this version, you, you get the idea that they're, they're, uh, they're doing their... The body swap is not a good idea. 
at all. And yeah, it's just, so yeah, the mind is one thing. Uh, the bad guy uses the uh, the axe to uh, damage Wheeljack, possibly kill him. Uh, yeah, so that's the last of the claimed cowpoke Wheeljack, unless they put him back together. Uh, maybe he's dead. That'd be messed up. Um, hmm, cowpoke got, got killed now. Well, anyway, so, uh, uh, so yeah, the, the uh, I wonder if this is a stage name, Sierra Leone. It's a town. That's funny. <laughs> okay. But yeah, we have we have uh, various characters in the story doing their thing. It's one of the sound recording makes It's just funny. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to go on to episode eight now. Uh, this one is is a is dude. Where's my trailer? Um, a spoof of the uh, 2000s movie, Dude, Where's My Car? I doubt that anyone in this the kid generation has ever seen that movie. Or, or anyone that's a millennial has ever seen it either. Um, it came out in 2000. And, and uh, yeah, it was about slackers, uh, slacker stoner guys, who, their car gets taken. They're hoopty. They gotta go on an adventure to get the hoopty. That's basically the plot. Optimus Prime's disappearing, reappearing trailer was also a meme uh, about ten years ago. The story was written, so there, so that that they know about. So, but it goes back to G1, where his trailer would just disappear. And that goes back to our generation, so eighties. Uh, that they Armada didn't really explore that. They just it was there. You know. um, and then uh, the Unicron trilogy didn't really explore that. But it's G1 when the trailer would just disappear. Uh, so they're homaging G1, they're homaging 2000, they're homaging, you know, um, and the trailer is, of course, attacked by all the Decepticons and everything. It completely gets thrashed, and then on the way out, they, they, they manage to put it back together while moving, uh, using the various Terrans and Maltos and stuff. Uh, and then they get to shoot the cannon, which everybody wondered about well, shooting the cannon, you know. But yeah, I'm assuming the Decepticons got blown away when they shot the cannon. But no, probably not. Uh, yeah, uh, it's fine. Uh, clearly a silly, fun story. Um, clearly, um, their intent was to just show a goofy thing. The uh, the end credits for the last episode in this one had a different Nickelodeon um, thing, so it was a little later. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that was the. Uh, the different different uh, post credits title card. Yeah. So uh, on the end, so yeah, the uh, music is the same. The yeah, it's a it, it, uh, trailer photo shoot. They're trying to keep up to the truth, which is from knowing about the trailer getting thrashed and then unthrashed, and thrashed again. Uh, yeah. There's there's a tr yeah, uh, and then a silly ending with the, the goofy thing going. On. I don't know how much, like, Zoomer kids are going to get that joke, though. I guess it's just kinetic and hyper, and that's what works. But, but, but yeah, they, they wouldn't get the reference, really. Um, the, the idea of the, the, the hoopty car that gets thrashed and then gets brought back is similar to that of uh, actually more closer to Vacation, than uh, which is even earlier in the 80s, National Lampoon's Vacation. Uh, uh, but but yeah, um, yeah. There's, there's there's and also the remake of Vacation from uh, 2010s or 2015 or so, which uh, which another hoopty car gets thrashed. Um, yeah, but the trailer. Yeah, so it's the trailer meme. It's literally a 22 minute episode of trailer. Sure, um, not exactly a great episode. Just kind of works on its own. We never did anything like this in, in, in Mush, just because it wasn't... We couldn't really do that. Um, uh, well, the newer Earthrise toys didn't have a trailer. So. But, um, <laughs> but the older ones did. We never really did any old one either. Yeah, uh, we did We did bring out the... the, the it transformed the location. Uh, but, but yeah, um, mm, the joke with the Mush was that we didn't... Ever show them transforming? The the two part finale of 
this is last June, 2024 was a, uh, you know, Witwicky, parts one and two, um, 40 minute story uh, on the, uh, uh, the, yeah, the, 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 the hashtag and Mo go down into the thing and uh, maybe they're thinking Mo is like a slang for something. It's not supposed to be. Um, it appears that they mentioned the town is in Pennsylvania, so it is indeed on the East Coast, but it's in New England, it's in Pennsylvania. Um, so it's a different different coast, a different timeline, different stuff, because the original G1 Transformers is all on the West Coast. Uh, yeah, and uh, the, uh, you know, the volcano is, the Autobot volcano is, is uh, Mount St. Helens, but they call it Mount Saskatchewan in the movie, in the story, but it's Mount St. Helens. Uh, and it's 80, 83, 80, it erupted in 80, and the Autobots were awakened in 84. So that's where that comes from. This one, it's completely different in their, their origin story. The East Coast, so it's similar to the, to the, some of the East Coast episodes. Uh, East Coast Avengers, yeah, it's kind of like that. Uh, Young Avengers, <laughs> except in reverse. Young Avengers, yeah. Anyway, so, uh, no doubt they were L.A. Whereas the East Coast was the original Avengers. So there's a lot of Marvel-y stuff, which makes sense because Marvel Comics did Transformers originally. Comics as well. Sunbow and Marvel were, it was, it was related back then. Before it was Disney. Long before it was Disney. And then there's been several comic books since, and UK ones as well. They reference the, the, the Dwellers, but that's a G1 um, character thing. That was expanded upon, and I'll transform as much of the Gabriel Kwan story that brought them to Fallen Empires. That, that, and and uh, we adapted that as a Transformers Mush episode for Halloween, I think 2021. So it's around Halloween time now. Well, it's about a week and a half off, so. Not funny. Um, and there will be another. The rest of this second season will be aired before Halloween. It's so coming up in days until the rest of the season. Uh, well, well uh, considering how long it took me to do this season, though, who knows? Uh, <laughs> so they go down into the thing, and they find some dwellers down there, which are more like Loom from uh, Prodigy than they are uh, plants. They're more like spiders, spider bug things. Um, uh, they, they turn off the lights, and they're able to escape. They go down into the ruins. The ruins are there. They find the head of a giant Transformer Titan, um, Titranus. Uh, the female titan that's down there. The, the alt-right probably doesn't like that because there's so many females in it, it's probably making them uncomfortable. Um, that nothing weird happens. You know, I think it's dope, but nothing weird happens. Um, the Autobots and Decepticons have a big fight over the last of the Ember Shards. They do a bait and switch. Uh, have, uh, they've got the Ember Shards. They gathered up like O parts. They reference O parts from the Japanese Transformers as well. They reference that, which is interesting. <laughs> and uh, also we have, we have, uh, yeah, and the, and the thing down in the thing is the O parts are the, the unusual artifacts, the Japanese, the unusual artifacts. The, the whole city of Witwicky is apparently this weird uh, thing put down there by Quintus Prime, creator of the Quintessons and the Transformers. They sort of blend those together. Uh, with with uh, with the other primes, they blended in with the uh, Solus Prime and Vect Prime and all the other primes. We'll, we'll just kind of stick them all together. Created the Quintessons. That's true. Quintus Prime created the Quintessons, um, and, and and other planets and life in the galaxy. They imply that he might have created Earth or at least left stuff on Earth, uh, and, and this uh, town is is a transformer, which is a little better than. What they did in Transformers Prime, well, some of these animators from this were in Transformers Prime, where they said Unicron was in the Earth. That's silly that Unicron would be in the Earth or be the Earth. They put that in, in last night as well, said Unicron's in the Earth. There's no, no piece of Unicron should be in the Earth. A Titan of Unicron is in the Earth. It's not Unicron, it's a Titan. They took our advice. They said, okay, we're going to do a Unicron like a character, like a Chaos Bringer character, but we're going to put only not not planet sized. We're gonna put her inside the town, underneath the town. They did that, um, and um, and uh, yeah, the chaos could corrupt her uh, powers. Naturally, Starscream wants to rule the universe. All uh, uh, the the infamous uh, Belinda Kelly uh, Blood Crow story, and there's crows in it. 
from the animated story, the the the, uh, the Wrath planet, the Wrath uh, stories, which were originally not on a planet but on Earth and other planets, and uh, in which Starscream imagines that he's in charge of everything, and they kind of do that in here. So the story is clearly they watched Mush. They the, the only only way they could have done it is they watched Mush. They watched our adaptations of other people's stuff, and they were like, "Oh, we can borrow that because it's free." Yeah, you can, because I, I adapted something from Mush. Uh, so that's cool. Um, we get to see Wrath. Dan. <laughs> she shows up. Instead of being a planet, it's more like the OG Blood Crow story. And she's a, a robot. She's a titan, basically. She shows up. She's going to do the 50-foot woman crushing the town kind of thing. Except over 200 feet. It's not really Unicron. It's Wrath. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's not Solus Prime. It would be a... a it would be a guardian robot, basically, of, of left on there, left down there by a sort of like an Omega Supreme thing, more than a unicorn. So it's Omega Supreme. And they go down there, and they and it can be turned into wrath if it's uh, corrupted by the power and stuff. The, 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 there are these weird uh, cutscenes where they keep going back and forth to uh, to the 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 strange. Like party over the Emberstone. I don't know why they're all partying that they got half the Emberstone. Because then the Decepticons will zero in on them, and there will come the Chaos uh, robot, and she will take it from. Them. Of course, she's gonna do that. But the kids show you know, if it had been done like in order without those flashbacks to the party, that would kind of make more sense. But they didn't do that. Uh, the Autobots uh, get zapped by the the. Uh, device. I think Wheeljack died because he didn't show up again. They have Prowl briefly in the ending scenes, but he doesn't say anything. I think he says like one line. They have uh, a... <laughs> uh, and, and again they have uh, yeah, the, 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 the character they were uh, the right wingers are complaining about. She doesn't actually address anything about her orientation at all in this whole season. Uh, this whole half a season, I should say. I'll have to not, not address it. So apparently they bowed to the other people and they're like, okay, we just won't mention it again. Yeah, we just won't bring it up. Which is kind of what happened with all Transformers Mush 2, although although they were, we were called on it in a, in a sense and we said, okay, we're going to make the, the character show up again. The trans character is going to show up and do some snarky comment that she was off somewhere defeating the... Uh, the, the, the evil uh, people uh, that were offending her by eating one of them. <laughs> well, she was off eating them, yeah. Um, so we, we, corrected <laughs> we corrected that one. Um, but, but yeah, they didn't do that here. Maybe the, maybe in the, the, the following uh, stuff in Octum when they have their, there's another batch of eight episodes coming. Yeah, so, so I thought to finish up that. That was from June. Yeah, so they have to defeat the robot. That The ending is kind of silly. Because they basically, they use their transformative powers to, to, well, I guess, wish the Emberstone, kind of like Wonder Woman 84, wish the Emberstone to them so they can decorrupt it. And then it falls apart. And that stops the robot. And they put a shield over the town and stop the robot. So it's just sitting there, like, in the middle of town. That's a giant robot. Huge, giant uh, guardian thing. Of course, sort of a wrath. They turn wrath into good, basically. So at the end, she's just like, uh, they're gonna help wrath. Um, but yeah, the um, the Autobots had the ghost town, and the Decepticons were under Starscream. And they finally got to be under Starscream because because Megatron became a good guy. That, that, that if they're gonna complain about something in the story, the story arc, this season, season two. They should complain about that, because that's silly, that Megatron, who is essentially psychotic and driven by his rage and his, his oppressive nature, oppressive nature, uh, addressed a little in Transformers 1, which is its own timeline as well. Uh, he wouldn't, by his nature, become good. He would still be psychotic. He would, he would have problems. He would be, yeah, he wouldn't be the good guy. He just wouldn't be. You can't, like, de reform somebody that's completely nuts. It doesn't work. So, <laughs> but yeah, um, hmm. So, yeah, so the, uh, the, the robots over there. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, huh. 
real close in order to get the Emberstone pieces, uh, the Chaos ones, they have to kind of kill the Chaos ones and take the Emberstone pieces too. So essentially the, the, uh, the, uh, the aftermath is what is the tow truck robot. He's essentially dead at the end of the story. He would be because he took his, his spark, which is a piece of the Emberstone. And uh, well, maybe they, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it appeared that the other one wasn't dead because it was smaller or something. But but yeah, that that's that, 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 yeah the 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 whole idea that the different Quintessons are doing their own thing, they're doing their. They're messing with the lore. Ooh, the lore is being messed with. Ah, yeah. It's not actual Transformers fans that are complaining about the lore being messed with. Yeah, because um, G One, we did the G One stuff way back in the day. Yeah, we did our first. Step. Yeah, we were doing the first fan films before fan films on, on the subject, as you can see from the channel. Um, <laughs> we were commentary tracks uh, during the show. In the six in the eighties, the nineteen eighties, and it was like, wow, look, this guy was really, really far back. Mmm. Yeah, my my stuff was done in eighty in eighty six, eighty seven, before the, and the movie came out, and afterward, and yeah, I mean, it's just never stopped. So yeah, this was a review of, uh, but I'm not going to go into that because I already have. This is a review of uh, Transformers Earth Spark season two, and. It's perfectly south, perfectly fine. They don't address anything untoward at all. I think the parts where they included woke stuff kind of work in the story because they just don't simply well, they don't go there this season at all. So, but also they shouldn't have backed down. They should have went there. But they, the, but it's it's a cultural zeitgeist that's happening. The Me Too movement. And 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 it, it started earlier, and it and and it's like it's just it's not a trend. It it should be a, 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 a something beyond a fad. It should be a trend. But uh, but it's uh, they they need to quit complaining about stuff that isn't really yeah. It's not worthy of their complaint. It's it's just why 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 are why are they? Uh, they're clearly not fans of, of animation and, and stuff and toys. And yeah, the animation is. They they can complain about the rough, rough editing and stuff. They complain about the. They can complain about the, some of the battle sequences. They could complain about the Megatron Prime friendship or whatever of the trailer scene. But that other stuff is not relevant. That's just icing, uh, space water, icing on the cake. It's not anything. They should not be complaining about that because it's not. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's complaining about nothing. It's a much ado, well, much ado about nothing is actually, in Shakespeare, was about sex. He couldn't say sex. He said, much ado about nothing. That, that case, this is not. This is much ado about nothing, literally nothing. It's a, there's no, nothing bad. It's just a Transformers cartoon. There's nothing bad. Nothing at all that's bad. Uh, it got very poor ratings. I don't know why. It's perfectly salvageable. I didn't watch the Bumblebee series or the other one. I did see the finale of the uh, the uh, Cyberverse. I did see their finale. It was fine, acceptable. <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, but I didn't really watch Cyberverse. Anyway, so this was Transformers Earth Spark, and that's it. Ah, yeah, so far season two. Yeah, well, they just don't address it. The, the elephant in the room. Whatever. And it really wasn't. It was a. It was, a, it was a nothing. It was a nothing. The the stuff. The controversy was nothing. There's just oh, there's a character that's different than you. That's what they're griping about. A character that's different than you. So what? <laughs> the chaos bringer stuff is worse. If you wanted to go there, it's like, oh, evil twin was evil. Yeah. Why? Why should we? Why should we? You know, say that. Yeah, Decepticons and evil twins are evil. Why, why should we mince words over that? Why, why, we should show people, the young people, the difference between good and evil. What's a good thing? Show them that. that the difference between good and evil. And the gray area on some of them. Like Prime comes off as kind of a, a doofus in this. Kind of a... <laughs> it's like, what? Well, yeah, but um, I think you can complain about that. But, you know, it's fine. 
it's perfectly acceptable. A transformer or spark, uh, I didn't mind it. Um, it's fine. <laughs>